Hey guys, this is Eric Weingarten with Weingarten Racing. I thought what I would do today was show you all the intakes that I'll be taking or getting dynoed on the dyno mule. As you're watching this, I'm hoping that they're doing the break-in run on the dyno mule itself, getting its baseline. And then I'll go up and we'll start testing all these manifolds, time permitting. But anyway, I thought I today would go over each one of the manifolds because I know they're in catalogs and you get some pictures, but I thought I'd do a better job and just try to show you as much as possible, measurements and everything else for each one and how close or different they truly are. So let me show you which all ones we have. And I'll start, and by the way, I'm gonna break this video down to talking about three at a time because several of them kind of go together. And you'll see what I mean in a minute. So let's talk about what I got. First off, these three, right here are all about the same height. And this is an, an Ellerbrock 2892, wherever the part number is, it's probably on the bottom somewhere. No, it's right there. This is the Holly Strip Dominator 300-110. This is the brand new Trick Flow R intake manifold. Those three I'm gonna talk about in a whole segment in this. Now these bottom three I'm gonna end up talking about too, but Let's talk about the two dual planes. This is a torque link. It's no longer available. Um, dual plane. And this is just a regular Elderbrock former RPM air, uh, intake. It's not an air gap. Now, I also asked AFR if they wouldn't, uh, would like to donate a um, their dual plane to see how it would compare. And I never really heard back, so I don't think it's going to happen on this test, unfortunately, because it would be neat, neat to see how a modern one compared to these ones. But these two for sure are getting tested. Below them, these intakes are all about the same height, and I'll trust me, I'll, I'll do these as a three pair of two. This is an Edelbrock uh, Super Victor 2925. This is a Brodex BM1000. This is the AFR 4811, which has got an interesting story because this is right down there um, to show you. These three are hurricane intakes from professional products, but they're all different. So let me get these apart so I can show you some of the measurements for these. Here are the two dual planes, and you might, and let me explain why I picked these. One, this is a Torque Link high tech. This is no longer available, hasn't been for probably five to 10 years. So good luck finding it. You probably can't on eBay, and they're probably pretty expensive. Um, this one I already had because the customer kind of abandoned it for 10 years, so why not? This one is an Elderbrock Performer RPM. You can get these currently. The reason why I chose this one is because in later tests on the dyno, what I want to do is cut down the divider, something similar to this, but I want to see how much actual power difference it makes. If I had gotten the air gap, it already has the divider cut down, so it won't be a good way of showing how much power it gains or loses in future tests. That's why I chose this. But let's talk about this one. This Torque Link is a very unique design of a dual plane. Some people have said it's horrible. Some have said it's good. Um, we're going to find out, but if you look at it compared to the air gap or not the, sorry, the RPM, what you will see is the torque link has a much longer runner here. And if you notice these two are paired together as opposed to the Elderbrock RPM that you, they don't pair these two together. Instead, it's different ones. So they're not, this is similar to what a single plane would be where they come in together like this, as opposed to the dual plane like these. So that's different. But the biggest thing is this runner length is much longer. It's 7.166 long. Now, the odd part is the short ones or the ones that comes underneath aren't near as long. They're 5.83. If you compare that to the Elderbrock, which somewhere I've written it on here, I guess maybe I didn't, but this one's five and three quarters. So it's actually a little bit shorter even than that. So there's that. The depth also is different on the plenum. So this is the shorter part of our dual plane is three inches deep. The short one on the air on this performer RPM is two inches deep. The long one, this one way down here is six inches deep. So you got way more plenum as far as this torque link goes. This one is only four inches. Also, if you notice, they have a grid underneath the air, the performer RPM here. While this one for you dimple guys has dimples. So it'll be different. I was able to measure the opening in here which I couldn't do on the Elderbrock. It measured a cross-sectional area of 2.51, not removing corner radius. The exit is 2.58. That's close to a 1206 gasket, by the way. 
The this one was two point. There it is. I uh, can't hardly see it. Well, at least you won't be able to see it. It's 2.18. This is closer to 1205. So the exits are bigger on the torque link and also the opening than the Elder Brock. That's the dual planes. These will be uh, tested for sure, but now you got a kind of a different idea. It'd be interesting because I believe this is the longest runner of any of the intakes we're testing. So I'd be really fascinated to find this out. Maybe we'll try a two barrel on these two. I don't really know, but there's the two dual planes. Now let's go on to some of the single planes. Here are the next three manifolds. This one is an AFR 4811. It is similar um, to the Super Victor, which is right here. This one, the one that I ordered is not port match and that's the one that's on it. I'm gonna talk more about this one in a minute because there's another one down there that I wanna show you the difference of, but we'll get to that in a minute. This one's the one that's going to be on the dyno to start off with, period. So that's that. This is an Outer Rock Super Victor manifold. It's the 2925. It's a newer model because it's got the little thinner dividers, which I'll show you in a minute. This is a Brodix BM1000, wherever that part number is gone. It's probably on the bottom somewhere or around where I'm not looking. But this is not the HVH stuff. This is the, the BM series. So this is the Brodix BM1000, but I'll get to all of these. So here we go. We're going to start off. I'll actually, I'm going to save this AFR for last because there's more to talk about. So let's go to this Elder Brock. So here's my, there we go. Here's what I mean. You can see the dividers are much thinner. If you've got an older Elder Brock Super Victor, they're much thicker. So this is a newer model. Uh, I argue it's also better. Plenum depth measure 3.875. The runner length, which is how long these are, I averaged them. And the average runner length is 5.82. I also measured the cross section at the opening, which would be right here. By the way, I'm not taking out corner radius. 3.83. And then at the exit, which is where the opening would be, 2.41. Or pretty close to a 1206, slightly smaller. Now, how does this compare to the Brodix? Here we are at the Brodix. Let me move my light over. Excuse this. There we go. This is the Brodix BM1000. It has the same plenum depth. 3.875 as all the others. So all these are the same plenum depth, about the same height too. So they're really, really close in height. The runner length is 5.59, which is shorter than the uh, Elderbrock Super Victor. It's also gonna be shorter than the AFR. You might say, how is that possible? Look at the runners themselves. The, bro the uh, Super Victor has an extended runner here. The AFR is extended really far. The Brodix, not as much. The cross-sectional area, because these are thicker, is less. So there's less area here. And that gets you five, nope, 3.59. And the exit's 2.34. This is closer to 1206 than the Super Victor is. So that's that one. Now, I like this intake manifold. It's pretty good. But and none of these are ported, by the way, obviously. But let's go to the AFR now. So I'm going to stop the video and pull out another one so you can see what I'm talking about. The thing that separates these two manifolds as far as the other ones, the Brodix and the Elderbrock, is one, it has this clover leaf design. And one of the things that's gonna be tested later on is if removing this makes any more power. The other thing is, right here, the dividers themselves. They have like more of an elephant ear design, so they're further out as far as extended, which you can clearly see here. That's different. But there's a reason why I have these two here. This one and this one are both the same part number, but I want you to look at the castings. That versus that. That versus that. I hate this. I need an assistance, what I need. But anyway, why am I bringing this up? because I'm gonna flip it over and show you, but this is version two and this is version three and they have the same part number. Notice the difference says 4811, cast in. I have this one on the dyno. This one I believe is a buddy bar casting. Buddy bars in America, they're American casting, that's all I could say. This one's probably an off offshore one and I can already tell you it's, it's superior, sadly. But here's what I mean. Besides the roughness in the castings compared to the newer one, the version three, 
There's another difference that's probably going to be worth some power. And I'd be really curious, but I don't know if AFR wants to cop up another M take, and I wouldn't blame them if they didn't. But I have the version 2. The version 3 has a, besides being a smoother casting itself, there's another difference. That's this. By the way, like, how do you know it's version 3? See, it says version 2.0, version 3.0. This is 3.0, look at their openings. This is what I'm running. Look at its openings. They're much smaller and well, you get the idea. This looks like I don't even have to port match it. I bet you it fits a 210 without even any port matching at all. This is not even close. This is definitely require port matching, which they do offer a CNC port matching deal, so it's not a big deal, but this one's as cast close to what it should be. The casting's more, probably more consistent, which is something that most likely Buddy Bar couldn't do, but the offshore castings for sure can. They're much more consistent. So anyway, the point being is, I have this one, and you're probably gonna watch a dyno thing, and you're gonna be like, man, that's pretty good, not knowing that this one may actually, in fact, be better, and I don't have the opportunity to use it, because I don't have one. You might say, yeah, you do, it's right here in front of you. Yes, yeah, for a customer, I'm not sure he wants me to use this one. I haven't asked for permission. Besides, it's kind of a, I'm already, I mean, I don't think there's probably five horsepower difference. Might be. But um, another manifold to test has already got plenty to test. But I bet you this one's better. And so when you're watching it, if the AFR is good, this one's probably even better. But anyway, let's go to the bigger intakes now. These are the last three manifolds to be tested. Now, they're all the same part number, but they're all completely different. This is the Professional Products Hurricane Intake Manifold. Each one was manufactured at a different time, hence they look different. This one's the oldest one. And let me just get my light out a little bit closer. You can see how thick those dividers are. These, if you were, you're my age or older, these were like one of the cheaper intakes that when they came out and they claimed that they had could beat everything and they had dyno tests to back it up. And I do believe it did very well on several of the stuff. So here's what it is. This is the older style. From there, they advanced to this style, where you can see the dividers got a little bit different. And currently now, they look like this, which the whole plenum's different, the dividers are thinner, and the casting itself looks cleaner. But the plenum itself is dramatically different than those. So I do have measurements for them. Uh, I think it's on this one, yep, sorry. Okay, there's gotta be a way to do this easier. 4.25 plenum depth. The opening on this one was 4.19. The opening on this smaller one was 3.65 cross-sectional area. The exits was 2.17. It's actually close to a 12.05. And it's that way on every one except for this one. This one is the total difference of them all because these two are the oldest versus the newest. I really do like this one. So we'll get to see how those compare. And trust me, I'll be doing different tests with this. And this intake may actually look a lot different when it goes on the dyno um, for the first test. And I'll explain that if I can make it happen with time. This one I picked up from auction for those that watched it. And you could tell someone decided, hey, I can, I'm not spending money to port a manifold. I can do it myself. They got this far, but that ain't the worst. That, that, by the way, I cleaned it up. I had mud all over it. That's, that's, not, that's not bad. This is bad. This is, I'm not paying $250 to have someone port match my intake. I can do it my damn self. Uh, yeah, no, you can't. <laughs> this is bad. This is a 1206. You can tell they've gotten into it here. Um, I'd say it's 1206. It's, uh, it's, I can't draw a straight line. Um, it's, it's, it's bad. I mean, yeah, it's flared out too. You can see, um, yeah, it's, it's bad. So we're going to find out how bad when we put it on the dyno. And then eventually what I'll end up doing is epoxying all this up to make it correct and see what it actually does. But yeah, that's, this one's just to see how much a bad port match job will actually hurt you. This thing should, if it hadn't been butchered, be close somewhat to this, but the, with the plenum being different, we'll see. Regardless, eventually I'm going to fix this and we'll see how much difference it made. But anyway, that's all the manifolds that will be tested. Uh, as of now, which I don't think any others are coming or will be here in time. So 
Now, I want to leave you with one more thing. What I think I'm going to do is I've written down all, written, I wrote down all these measurements from all the manifolds. I have flowed the AFR with it attached to the head on all eight cylinders. I've got a whole bunch of measurements for all this stuff. And the cool thing about video is you visually could see something. But the problem is, you really is hard time pausing on certain elements. So what I think I'm going to do is after the first round of dyno testing, I'm going to print all the stuff out. And if you would like to purchase that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to collate it, go to FedEx and put all my notes. They're just going to be photocopied from my notebook and all the dyno sheets. And I'm going to put them all together in a, in a binder. And if you want to buy that stuff, because I do think I love YouTube and it's free. Um, it's harder to see that stuff. So look, you have to pause and then enlarge. And if it's on your phone, it's really hard to see. And if it's on your big screen TV, it's, you can't, you get the idea. You can't always see it. So I think having it, an actual page in front of you would be something nice to see as you're watching the video. If you would like that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to charge $10 over whatever it costs me per doing it. So you're like, how oh, you trying to make money? Really? I'm just trying to get my money back. I'm going to, I'm not even, I'm just trying to break even or not lose as bad. So I think that's what I'll do. Um, so after this first round, I'll make one book. It'll probably be a pretty good one. So you'll have notes that I haven't even mentioned here. Spring specs, um, everything I have. And you can take a look at that and I'll be in one book. And I think after each dyno run session, because there'll be so much data, I'll collate that together. Unless it's something that's only tested like one little theory, then I'll just save it and compile it till I get a bigger book. But I think this one's going to be a pretty... This will have a lot of information, a lot of pages anyway, so it's much better to use it for this so anyway thank you guys thanks for watching remember i'm no superman and this video is long and you guys take care